If you get a hospital bill of 6 lakh rupees and you go to your insurance company and say to them that, hey, I've got 6 lakh rupees of bill here. I'm covered for 15 lakh rupees. So settle this 6 lakh rupees. Your insurance provider's reaction is going to be something like this. <laughs> Sir, sit down. We will only give you 2 lakh rupees. Now, can we call this as a medical insurance scam? Absolutely, yes. Because you paid hefty premium amount, maybe 40,000 rupees, 50,000 rupees every year, and you got only 2 lakh rupees worth of claim back. What the fun? Let me show you why this happens. And the moment you understand why this happens, you can totally avoid it. So what do you see on my screen is, let us say you have an insurance cover of 15 lakh rupees. And unfortunately, you need to get hospitalized and you undergo a medical surgery. Now see what your hospital bill is likely to be room rent let us say 10,000 rupees per day and assuming that you admitted for seven days 70,000 rupees then ICU charges so if you were in ICU for let us say three days the charges are going to be typically double than your room rent so 20,000 rupees per night that comes to be 60,000 rupees then surgery charges let us say 2 lakh rupees and test and diagnostics roughly 150,000 rupees medicines a rip off 80,000 rupees and doctor visits 3,000 rupees per day and it comes out to be 42,000 rupees. So your total hospital bill comes to be 6 lakh rupees and you go to your medical insurance company say that hey boss I've got 15 lakh rupees of covers so I'm hoping you can give my 6 lakhs back but their calculations will be entirely different let me walk you through. The first thing they will do is they will say that okay room rent 10,000 rupees per night sir you're not eligible for it you will say why why I'm not eligible for it sir have a look at your policy here and you will see that in here you have a sub limit on the room meaning that you can get maximum of 5000 rupees per day and if you did not read your policy of course this is going to be a surprise but let us say that you are still okay you will say okay rather than 10,000 rupees per day I will get 5000 rupees per day so what are you going to say to him is that okay clear my 10,000 rupees per day to be 5000 rupees per day but settle remaining money and your company is going to say to you that sir wait there are few other things I'm not yet finished right so they will tell you that okay ICU charges sir in your bill it is 20,000 rupees per night but if we read the policy terms and conditions because of a sub limit on your ICU charges it is going to be only 10,000 rupees per day so it means that you will not be eligible for 20,000 rupees per day you will be only eligible for 10,000 rupees per day you will now say okay fine because I did not read the policy I am okay with 10,000 rupees per day you will now say that boss now clear remaining bill and he will say sir I am not yet finished let me also talk about the surgery charges tests and doctor's visit so the surgery charges test and the doctor's visit these three items also need to be reduced by 50% you are immediately going to fall out of your chair because you did not anticipate it and this happens because of this very important clause in your medical insurance which is proportionate deduction what it simply means is that depending on your policy except the medicines every other charge in the hospital bill that you have will be reduced in proportionate to your room rent limit so if your room rent limit is 5000 rupees and you took a room of 10000 rupees that means you're only eligible to 50 percent now this 50 percent reduction will get applied to your entire hospital bill except the medicine so in this example surgery charges test as well as doctor's visit you will not get 100% paid you will only get paid by 50% so 2 lakhs becomes 1 lakh rupees 1 lakh 50,000 rupees becomes 75,000 rupees and 3,000 rupees becomes 1500 rupees so your total eligible claim will become 2 lakh 71,000 rupees so out of 6 lakh rupees how much is the eligible claim 2 lakh 71,000 rupees you will say okay now boss I have not read my terms and conditions at least clear 2 lakh 71,000 rupees then your insurance company is going to say to you sir last point I need to make <laughs> and what they are going to say to you is that you also have a copay of 20% meaning that out of this eligible claim of 2 lakh 71,000 rupees you will need to pay 20% and we will only pay 80%. So 20% of 2,71,000 is 54,000 you need to pay. So we will settle only 2,17,000 rupees. This is a total ripoff that all of us must be avoiding in our medical insurance. I am now going to walk you through 10 simple checks that if you do, you are not likely to be in this situation and you can save lakhs of rupees. So in order to explain these 10 checks, I'm heading to Ditto's website. People who do not know Ditto, Ditto is an excellent insurance platform. And what I like the most about Ditto is that it's a totally spam free insurance company they will never call you they will never send you sms to pester you to buy a particular insurance and also it is backed by Zeroda. so the first check that i encourage everyone to do is to make sure that you do not split the bill meaning 
you do not have any copay terms within your insurance policy so we saw in our hospital bill example copay of 20% and many people take that because copay reduces your premium do not fall for that trap also what you see on my screen is an example of a copay terms and conditions that you must read so for example here this is called zonal copay so in here insurance provider has split the entire country into three tiers tier 1a is delhi and ncr tier 1b is mumbai pune ahmedabad badodara and surat and tier 3 is remaining india now let us say you pay the premium as per the tier 1a then that's fine there is no copay you can take the treatment across the india anywhere however if you pay the premium for tier 1b then what is likely to happen is that you are free to take treatment in tier 1b which is mumbai pune ahmedabad badodara and surat and as well as tier 2 but if you go and take a treatment in delhi and ncr in tier 1 then you will have to pay 20 percent copay likewise if you pay the premium for tier 2 and end up taking a treatment in tier 1a and 1b then you will have to pay 20 percent copay now please tell me if you have a medical situation will you look at your insurance policy and say that oh i'm not going to go to ahmedabad because i will have to pay 20 percent copay no you will go ahead with the doctor and the hospital that you think is the best for your treatment so please make sure you do not have any copay terms and conditions in your policy the second most important check is whether you have any restrictions on room and room rent again we saw that in our hospital bill example and for this ditto has summarized beautifully one of the good articles on room rent features i will provide you the link please go ahead and read it but if i were to summarize this you will typically find five types of room rent terms and conditions so for example no capping on room rent room rent cap on specific room times so for example if you're only allowed to take an ac room single room sharing room and all that co-payment on room rent room rent with capping also room rent waiver add-on what you need to go in my opinion is that go for number one which is no capping on room rent or no limits whatsoever on room rent because when you're going for treatment you want to be free in selecting any type of room because it's not just about convenience it's also all about availability of the room in the hospitals and you don't want to wait for the treatment just because you've got a sharing room in your terms and policy and the hospital doesn't have any sharing room available at the time of your treatment so please do not make this mistake even if you need to pay a little bit higher premium that's absolutely fine because no capping on room rent will give you the right treatment at the right time and also it will save you a lot on your hospital bill the third very very important check is check for disease wise sublimit let me give you a very quick example so again if you go to ditto's website you will see a beautiful article in a very very simple language so here let us say that you have a health insurance plan of 10 lakh rupees of coverage but let us say there is a sublimit on let us say heart surgery and that is that only 1 lakh rupees now you get admitted to hospital and you get a bill of let us say 4 lakh rupees Although you are covered for 10 lakh rupees, you are not going to get more than 1 lakh rupees because of this capping of 1 lakh rupees. So please be very, very careful. I checked a number of policies online and you see on my screen, many of these insurance providers will have something like this. They will have a list of disease and they will say that, for example, here 50,000 rupees is your limit in case you get hospitalized because of these specific disease. So please make sure that you go for insurance policy that does not have any sublimit based on the disease so that you are free to take whatever treatment you need because we cannot anticipate what kind of disease we are going to get therefore it is absolutely important to not have any sublimits on the specific disease the fourth very very important check that you must do is if you come down here you will see something called as opt for pre and post hospitalization care what it simply means is before you get hospitalized there may be some tests done there may be some doctor visits there may be some medicines so your insurance policy will cover all of that expense as well and post simply means that after you're discharged from your hospital again doctor visits diagnostic tests medicines and all that will be covered by your health insurance company now the most insurance companies will give you the pre and post care but where they will differ is in terms of number of days so for example here let us say pre hospitalization you will see some of these insurance companies are offering 30 days some of them are offering 60 days likewise if you go for post hospitalization coverage you will see some of them are covering only up to 60 days after hospitalization discharge and some of them are covering for 90 days or 180 days my simple suggestion here is that go for minimum 60 days of pre-hospitalization and minimum of 180 days of 
post hospitalization so that both pre and post expenses are covered because they might be 10 to 20 percent of your entire treatment expenses so please make sure you can go for maximum durations so far if you're liking this video request you to hit the like button and if you're not liking this video let me know in the comments why you're not liking this video and i promise to you that i will improve in the next time with that let us move to check number five six seven and eight and what you see on my screen is check five six seven eight is what i call waiting period which is shown number five here in ditto's website while explaining these four waiting periods to you i might get really upset and angry but i'll try to calm my nerves down because what i feel is that this is a total ripoff from the medical insurance companies so let me explain to you one by one these waiting periods number one is initial waiting period so when you buy insurance policy for the first 30 days you can't take any cover you can't be treated in hospital using this policy and my question is why i'm paying you premium for day one why the hell you're not allowing me to use my insurance policy the only time i can use it in case the accident happens well disease can come anytime so i really don't understand why this is a industry-wide practice to wait for minimum 30 days i don't like it at all number two is pre-existing disease waiting period so if you already have an illness or a disease then they are not going to cover you for like up to two years or four years so this one i do understand that if i have a pre-existing disease and i take insurance what i'm doing is i'm taking an advantage of insurance company but two to four years of waiting period is too long if i have a knee condition now I'm okay to wait maybe for another one year or six months. It doesn't mean that I should wait for four years to get a treatment. So again, go for policies that have waiting period as low as possible so that at least you can get treated. Third type of waiting period is specific disease. So for example, if you develop any ENT kind of a condition that you need a surgery for, another example might be hernia. They are not immediately life-threatening disease and insurance companies are saying that you can wait for the treatment. But again, my question is if I'm paying you premium, you are deciding the premium, then why should I wait? If I have a condition, I would go and get it treated. Again, I do not like these inclusions of specific disease in the terms and condition i would highly urge you to go ahead and read each of the disease and go with the policy that has minimum disease listed when it comes to waiting period and the waiting period should be minimum as minimum as possible and the number four is waiting period for critical illness this is a total ripoff so if somebody is detected with critical illness like cancer what the insurance policy is doing is totally washing away their hands saying that we are not going to treat you you have to wait for two years i mean two years is such a long period for a cancer patient how can you even have these conditions and this needs to be totally stopped and if you want to help out do like this video make sure you share it with your friends and family so that more and more people can talk about these unreasonable points and terms and conditions that the insurance providers have in their policies and the last one is the waiting period for maternity benefits again go for insurance policies that have minimum wait period i understand that somebody is planning to be a mother or a father and they go for insurance policy so that they can take the maternity benefit and in that case i would say go for policies where the waiting period is as minimum as nine months so that whenever you conceive you can get going with your treatment so these are the five types of waiting period that you must be aware and you must check in your insurance policy the last check check number 10 i encourage all of us to do is whether you are covered for your day care treatment or not so first let's understand the difference between day care treatment and opd because it's important for us to understand that opd treatment is that any medical condition that you do not need hospitalization while the day care treatment simply means that your condition is such that you must be hospitalized but your treatment will not take more than 24 hours you don't need to be in the hospital overnight you can go in the morning get treated and then come back in the evening now a very good example that i found in ditto's website it is very clear that for example you all of a sudden have a tummy ache and you go to a hospital and they declare that it is appendicitis and you need to be treated immediately and guess what you can be treated in the next four to six hours and you're back home by the end of the day costing you 80,000 rupees and if your policy does not have daycare treatment ticked then this 80,000 rupees you are not going to get so please make sure that you have daycare treatment covered in your terms and conditions in your insurance policy because there are a lot of treatments nowadays that can get done within a day like cataract for example so please make sure you are covered for all of that also i would highly recommend you to go to ditto's website and read tons of very very good articles explained in a extremely simple simple language please go ahead and read these articles because it will help you understand your medical insurance policy a lot in detail 
detail and you can get benefited from that also i would request you to watch this video now because it will help you understand term insurance a lot in detail lastly you can consider subscribing to my youtube member community because i talk about in-depth exclusive analysis for my member community on topics such as mutual funds and many other personal finance related items with that i hope you enjoyed this video i will see you in my next video until then keep rocking